I'm an artist who works in the medium of choreography, and that does not exclude any context for working as an artist in choreography. Black Flags, insofar as it is reproducible, is unlike any other choreography. There are objects like the robots, for example, that are a choreographed object. Yeah, the robots have received a choreography. They perform an extra human or superhuman spectacle. We used industrial robots because I wanted to avoid or I wanted to avoid an anthropomorphic presence. Um, we made a lot of effort to de-anthropomorphize these robots in their actions and we've done everything we can to take away the idea of, of dominance or submission or purpose, although it does creep in. As soon as you have an armature moving similar to a human arm, yeah, there will be a narration. I see the, the robots as support for the flags. The flags are the actual choreography. Um, the choreography is between on one hand, the robot, the flag, and the air in the room. So air is the third invisible player. You have to basically choreograph the air and the flags. What we have now is an industrial robot being plucked from industry, having an industrial task, being plucked placed in this context, being given what's called a poetic task, and then when that is over, they disappear back into the industrial landscape. The robots themselves have neither intelligence nor volition. They have no will. But you cannot be in the same room with them because they're lethal. They will not stop unless we stop them. Or I can turn back yeah. smoothly. Yeah. To get some of those uh, 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 yeah, out. Think, yeah, that's just more. Working on the robots was obviously a, a learning process for myself and Sven Turner, the chief programmer. Um, my job was to make Sven uh, aware of what my choreographic goals were and then Sven had to translate what he thought these were into actions through the software. And you have to keep track of thousands and thousands of commands, movement by movement. In this work, we're making a very, very large spatial counterpoint. And there is a very conscious alternation between extremely complex, I want to say counterspatial actions, and very formal, very clear geometric patterns that are probably only performable by a robot with that kind of beauty and precision, perfect horizontalities changing level and angle at the same time, very oblique turns without disturbing relationships. They can hold still one part still while moving in another direction. There's a distribution of forces which is really unique and very um, in, you know, appealing and intriguing to watch. A lot of the work focuses on collapsing space.
a choreographic scene like the film Alleinigung is a observation of a kind of choreography that can only be performed by humans. What I must say about Leinigung is that this is something that can't be accomplished in another medium because the medium itself is thinking. The medium is forming its own state out of an agreed upon set of rules. Yeah. It all has to do with grasp yeah, and threading into space. I was trying to think of if we could take the air out of something, if we could compress the material together, a bit like one of those vacuum packages, yeah? We'd have a kind of a singularity which contained all these potentials that obviously couldn't work in an, an expanded space. It's another kind of, of interaction. So all the space, and a great deal of the time is removed. And in the Leinigung, there's this slow accumulation of rhythm. Yeah, it starts out very tight and complex. At one point, it expands, and then it really collapses at the end. So it forms this, this new scale of relationship. Towards the diagnostic gaze is a, I want to say very primitive MRI. The object is a very common feather duster. A choreographic object is a situation that brings up an unconscious competence, something that asks you to make an extra step, and you strategize to fulfill the criteria of this demand to the best of your ability, but often these criteria are not something you can intellectualize. So there's only a physical answer to this proposition. Hold the object absolutely still. The feather duster translates your motion into the motion of another object. But the fact that you cannot hold the feather duster still uh, is uh, like a vanitas, a reminder of your unique status, that you are human and you are mortal. This particular exhibition, it's very simple. It goes from scale. It goes from a very large, very three-dimensional situation with the robots in the next situation, the space collapses to some degree, uh, increasing its dimensional complexity. And in the last work, when you hold the feather duster, so the third duet, big spatial duet, tight spatial duet, and then the last one, you've collapsed. There's no more space anymore between the two players, which would be the object and yourself. And you're looking at an internal space. So you've gone bum, bum, and actually gone inside. So space has inverted itself in this particular exhibition.